<laughs> well, <laughs> this is the kind of film that is so impactful, and I think a lot rests on your character to hear, largely because of his tragic backstory that's so affecting, mm -hmm. but also because I think he puts a face and a story to something that a lot of people turned a blind eye to. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if you could speak to that. Um, well, it's, it's funny. I, um, about three and a half years ago, a friend of mine moved to Los Angeles mm -hmm. for work. And um, I went out to visit him. I was like, yo, you have a pad. I'm, come check it out. And um, he lived in downtown L.A. And it was my first time in downtown L.A. And subsequently, outside of his window was Skid Row. Mm -hmm. And I had never heard of or imagined. I thought it was a fictional place from Little Shop of Horror. And when I saw it, it literally was a little shop of horror. It was unbelievable. And the fact that most of those people out there on the street are veterans mm -hmm. blew my mind. And it just, it was very humbling and sickening and upsetting. And um, so I come back to New Orleans, I call my reps, and I was like, look, I want to do something about homelessness. I don't know what, uh, if it's a short, if it's a character mm -hmm. study, if it's what. And um, a year later, I got this script. And ironically enough, it just, it, it blew my mind um, and really excited me uh, because it gave a, a voice and a face to the faceless and voiceless population of our society in anywhere. I mean, I was just in Germany and it's the exact same thing. Um, and it's just, it's heartbreaking that we can think so much of ourselves that we kind of negate everyone else's reality. It's interesting what you're saying about witnessing something like Skid Row and then it influencing your work or the choices you make. Do you find that that's the case a lot, that you'll experience something like uh, that? It is. It is. Mm. It, and I, I find it a lot with everyone who's a uh, creative entity or an artist. I mean, it's it's funny when you look at it. I was uh, I remember reading this uh, Robin Williams interview and everybody was like, why don't you go back to being the old Robin Williams and stop doing these movies like Patch Adams? And he's like, well, you know, I have, I have kids now. So I want my kids to see these movies, you know? And um, it, it just, your life should always influence your work and your decisions because, you know, if something isn't worth doing, I, I would rather be at home with my son's fishing, you know, or coaching soccer. Um, it takes something very uh, important to take me away from home. I'd also love to know, with Paul Bettany directing this, he spoke a bit about being influenced by films of the 70s, mm -hmm. 70s dramas. And I think at that time, it was more common for directors to step back and let the actors influence the characters a lot more and kind of run wild and take a lot more risks. Definitely. Did you find that he was coming from that place as well? Uh, drastically. It was, mm -hmm. it was funny because, you know, with this movie, I came into a vid with a very specific design and idea of what I wanted to hear to be. Um, it's not often as an actor you get to just be silent and still. Um, with this movie, what I love about it so much, there's so much said that isn't spoken. And, um, you know, when I read the script, the script was very short. I was like, wow, it's going to be like a 60-minute movie. But then I realized how much flavor and, and, and color and passion Paul was layering into it and how it was like a you know, a, a movie from an earlier date, the way he shot it. And, you know, there's so many beautiful sequences in it that I feel propel the characters to the next moment in the story without having to say it, we're falling in love now. You know, it's, um, it's, it's really refreshing when you get to come to something like this off of, you know, something where everything's blowing up around you. I've never seen falling in love on screen portrayed in such a way that felt so realistic, hauntingly right. realistic, yeah. where you just see the, the things that they have to do for each other and endure right. as a symbol of how they feel right. about each other. Can you talk right. about playing those scenes because they're so harrowing? Well, I always laughed and got to say, when I was doing the movie, I would talk to my friends or uh, my wife, and I would always say, I get to fall in love with Jennifer Connelly every day, you know, <laughs> so work is good. It was, um, it was, it was fun. I mean, it was, it was exciting um, to rediscover that, like, high school aspect of love, you know, when it was just, you see a person and you're like, that's, that's her. I've been looking for her. I want her, you know, and going through all the hoops and jumps and ridiculousness to prove yourself to that person. Uh, it was very um, animalistic in a way. It's, um, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was very unlike 
our day and age where you swipe left or swipe right to tell a person. There's no swiping like left or right Just in this way. <laughs> taking care of someone when they're coming down from heroin withdrawal. Exactly. It is That's gritty. Not swiping. <laughs> it's gritty, but it's also, you know, that scene where she's she's withdrawing and he's taking care of her, it's in a nice, you know, um, accommodation. It's in a nice apartment mm. and the early scenes, they're in these beautiful parks mm. where there's a lot of green. It's shot in a more dreamlike way than you typically see these kinds right. of stories. I yeah, and that's really more like... of the fairy tale aspect of it. I feel like, you know, what Paul did, which I really enjoyed when I saw the movie, he found the beauty in despair. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel like when you see people and you're like, oh, their life must suck all the time. Like, how could you live like that? But no, there are actually times where you find, you know, the, the awesomeness of life triumphs. You know, and I think that's kind of how this movie works with our uh, love for each other, where it's more of a, a, a need for another person, a common spirit. Um, you know, H Hannah is kind of Tahir's uh, guardian angel, the way he looks at it. And, you know, if he can just save Hannah, he'll go to heaven for all of his, you know, missed opportunities and things he's done in his past. That's why he's trying so hard to get her to go home, you know. Um, so, but you know, with the things that they've done in their past, neither one of them can truly ever be saved. Well, she's his angel, but I think he really changes her Definitely. so significantly, and that's really great to watch. Yeah, yeah, it's it's interesting how they both uh, kind of interlock with each other, mm. and how their re one reality affects the other and influences the other, uh, and that's kind of how relationships should be. <laughs> you should take care of your love interest, your significant other, like, you know, that when I'm in a relationship, my job is to take care of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the partnership they have, that, that she wants them to stay together no matter what, and he's like, it's better for you if right. you're on your own. I thought that was so significant. And also, I re recall something you said in an interview, I think during the Toronto Film Festival, that being on set with Jennifer inspired you to be more fearless in yeah. your role. Yeah, I was wondering if you could speak about how being on set and, and be working with actors of that caliber inspires you and influences um, you. Well, you know, acting is a very, acting in movies is a very interesting uh, medium because you have people who are considered movie stars and, you know, put on the holy grail of society. And then you see them and you meet them and they're just regular people. They just happen to be outstanding at mm -hmm. what they do. Mm -hmm. So I live by the idea, the... Um, the race of life is not won by the swiftest of foot, but the one who endures to the end. And I feel like when you're caught up in the race of life, you have two choices. You can run faster or quit. And um, when, I'm, when I met Jennifer and I saw her and the way she worked, I was like, I have to run faster. You know, there's, there's the simplicity and effortlessness of her work was very humbling because for most of us, it takes so much for us to get to that place. And um, I realized all her preparation just comes to set with her every morning. And that was something I wanted to achieve and attain.